In this video, I'm going to show you six Lightroom techniques to add drama to your landscape photography. Using the tools available in Lightroom, these techniques are quick to use and will take your photos to the next level. I use a lot of these techniques in my landscape photography. Over the last few years, Lightroom has become more capable as an editing tool and I don't have to rely on Photoshop to pull off complex edits. But let's jump straight into the six techniques. This video is made possible by the generous support of Outdoor Photo. This first technique, enhancing light direction. So basically what that means is you want to enhance the direction of the sunlight. You want to emphasize a bit more where the light is coming from. So in this image, for example, the light is actually coming from above this massive dune here and the light is shining on the foreground, but I feel like the background's a little bit too dark and with this technique, you can emphasize that light. So I'm just going to go into the develop panel, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I want to see the full image because I'm going to apply a radial gradient onto the image, but I'm not going to start the radial gradient on the actual image. It's going to be above the image. That's why I wanted to zoom out. So I'm going to click and drag a large radial gradient. If you can imagine the sun being around that dot there, that's kind of the way I want to place the gradient there. So you can see the gradient is going to affect this area in red here. My feathering is quite high, so it's the feathering is about 65. And all I'm going to do is increase the exposure. So you can see it's getting brighter as the light comes over that dune there. And then what you can also do is add some negative dehaze just to sort of haze up that light a little bit. And then you can warm it up just a small amount there too. Another example of enhancing light direction, I will use this image here. I'm just going to zoom out again. I'm going to zoom out to 6%. I'm going to create that radial gradient again. This time it's going to be quite a narrow one because if you can imagine the sun over to the right hand side here. So I'm placing this black dot where the sun is and I'm going to create quite a narrow gradient there. Everything that is red there will be affected by this little edit here. So again, I'm going to add some exposure, maybe not too much, some negative dehaze. You can see the dehaze sort of adds that atmospheric light there a little bit, not too much. And then when you have atmospheric light coming through, you need to increase the blacks because that, that light will soften or haze up that, that distance there. So I've done that. So now I'm going to increase the temperature of the light there. Add a bit of tint. And I'll just turn this on and off so you can see. It. You can see I've just added that light direction in there. So now what I want to do is I don't like the effects of being applied into that very bright part of the sky there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the highlights from that mask we've created here. So I'm going to click subtract luminance range. That's going to select the range of tones that I want to remove. So I'm going to click on this area here and then it's going to remove that from the mask. Click the show overlay to see what we're doing. So now you can see the effect has been taken out of that bright sky there. It's only really happening in this land section. So let's just turn that off and then you can see the before and after and that's that you can see there's some nice haze there just adding a little bit more atmosphere and a bit more drama into the image all right the second technique i'm going to show you is to cool the shadows now what this does is because in this image for example the the sun is hitting these nice clouds here and it's, it's a very sort of warm image I don't want to cool down the image too much because I want to keep that warmth in the clouds there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this image quite warm. And then in the color grading section, I'm going to cool down the shadows. And what that's going to do is it's going to create some nice contrast between the cool shadows and the bright highlights. So simple to do on the color grading panel here in the shadows color grading circle. I'm going to click and drag down. I always overemphasize the color just to choose a color I like a very dark blue and what you can do also is with this balance slider here you can you can just knock it up a little bit so you can see and adjust where you want those blue tones to be falling so I think around about there is good 75 that's obviously too blue now so I'm just going to drag this little circle up here again and just settle on something around about there so off and on you can see it's a very warm image there, but just adding that cool tint into those shadows 
really works well. Right, in this next example, again, I like the warmth of the image. I like the sun rays coming through. I don't want to cool down the image, but I want to cool those shadows. So again, simple to do. Click and drag that blue slider there on the color grading for the shadows. Drag it down and then just knock that slider back up just to put enough of that blue tone into those shadows. You don't want to overdo it because it looks fake. But it's nice just to add a subtle hint of that coolness, increasing the drama in the image. So this is without the color grading. And then with the color grading on, you can see the nice cool shadows there. It's a nice technique, simple to do, but it does really make a big difference to the image. All right, the next one, custom sky vignetting. This is one of my favorite ones. I really enjoy doing this one. It's a little technique that's pretty easy to implement. It's basically creating a sky mask and intersecting that with a linear gradient. So what you do is you go into your masking, select sky. Now basically we're going to create a gradient from the top of the sky down into the very starting point of the land. But I don't want to affect the mountains here. That's why I've created a sky selection first. So now clicking on the mask and then holding down alt allows you to intersect the mask. So now we're going to intersect that with a linear gradient and click and drag down. So now you can see I've created that gradient, but it's protecting the mountain there. So if you do anything to that mask, it's not going to affect that mountain there. So this technique is pretty simple. We are going to darken that top portion of the sky a little bit and then add some cool white balance. Maybe darken it down a little bit more. And then also adding some clarity. The clarity is really going to enhance those textures in the clouds and add a lot more drama. Get down a little bit more, maybe drop the white balance a bit. The cool white balance is a real good tool to use to add drama to the image. You know, a warm image is, is happy, but a cooler image is, is very like, it's very dark and dramatic. So I use the white balance a lot to cool down my images to add drama. So that's what we're doing here. Just be careful when you are creating a sky mask, sometimes you get some haloing and it hasn't selected the sky perfectly. So you might want to go in and just refine that selection a little bit. That's the before and the after. Very simple technique, but it makes a big difference. So the next example of this same technique is on this image. Again, I'm going to select the sky. Then I'm going to intersect it with a linear gradient. Then we grab the exposure and drop it down. This image is already quite cool, so I don't need to cool down that sky too much. I'm going to add some clarity and that's really going to punch out the detail in that, in that sky, then add some nice drama. So you can drag this down if you want. That's the technique applied there. Very simple to do, but it adds quite a big difference to this image, especially that sky was quite bright. It was very stormy, but now we've added that drama in and it's created quite a moody scene. So this next technique is basically stripping all the colors away and allowing the tones to come through. Often when I'm editing images and there's a lot of contrast in the scene or I want to add a lot of contrast, the colors start suffering. And sometimes I don't enjoy the colors in those very high contrast images. So what I like to do is I like to strip away the color. You can use the black and white here in Lightroom, but often what I'll do is I'll just take the saturation down to zero because I like the tones that I achieved when I was editing the image. And I don't want to necessarily change the color profile to black and white because then it starts changing the tones. In my experience, I like to just drop that saturation. And then what I like to do is I will come in and add more contrast. You can add contrast with this contrast slider here, but I prefer using the tone curve. It just allows a little bit more control. So I'm going to drop the blacks there a bit increase the whites. Then what I like to do is add a little bit of color grading to the image. I like to cool down the shadows and maybe add a slight little warm tint to the, to the highlights. So similar to the previous technique, I'm just going to cool down the shadows. I normally choose something roughly about 225 on the hue there. You can see H225. Around about there, that's a good place to start. 
and then what I'll do is maybe warm up the highlights a little bit very very subtly something like that this next image is a great example of this technique in this image I enjoyed all the atmosphere and all the light coming through I love the clouds but the color in the image just didn't do it for me the color of the green landscape there with this lighting it just made the image a little bit too happy I wanted a dark and dramatic image so as simple as taking a little bit of color away and applying that color grade, that's the image I settled on. You can see the shadows are slightly cool, the highlights are a little bit warm. And for me, I much prefer the representation of this image than the previous one. I feel like this image definitely needed this technique and I'm very happy with this one. I love the drama in this image. Following on from the previous image, talking about greens in an image, and this is a very subjective opinion and this is just my personal preference, but I feel like when you want to add drama to an image and make the image more foreboding and more moody, greens can make it appear too happy sometimes and too vibrant. So what I like to do is just to desaturate the greens a little bit. So you come down to your HSL panel here, click saturation, grab this little adjustment tool and click and go over the image and select a green and then just click and drag down and you'll see those sliders start dropping in that HSL panel there. So for me, that feels a little bit more dreary, a little bit more moody, a little bit more dark. So before and after you can see the greens are very vibrant there. Taking them away appears a lot more moody and desaturated, which definitely helps emphasize a lot of mood in the image. And then moving on to the final technique, custom vignetting. Lightroom does have a vignetting tool, but it's very basic and you cannot customize it. You can't move this vignette around. So I prefer using a radial gradient to pull off a custom vignette. So go into your masking here, radial gradient. I'm going to zoom out because I want to see the full image because my gradient is going to go over the image. So I'm going to click and drag, create that radial gradient. But I want to affect the outside. I don't want to affect the inside here. So I'm going to click invert. So you can see the red on the outside is the mask and that's where the image is going to be affected. The reason why I like to use a custom vignette, especially in this image, for example, the light is coming from the left hand side. So I don't want to darken that side. I want to leave that side bright to emphasize the light coming in from the left hand side here. So what I can do is I can actually move this over And then I'm going to subtract another gradient just to protect that area there. I'm going to click subtract, radial gradient, I'm going to click and drag over that. I don't want to darken the left hand side there. So you can see it's taken the mask away from that area. And now I can darken down. Let me go to the extreme just so you can see I've darkened down the vignette there but it's protected that area if you darken that down again it's going to block that light from coming through there that's obviously too much so i've just darkened the image there a little bit before and after it's a nice way to customize a vignette in lightroom but the best thing about this custom vignette is you have then access to all of these tools here so if you want to desaturate that vignette you can if you want to change the white balance of the outside there you can it allows a lot more finer control over the editing of that vignette thank you so much for watching i hope you managed to learn something if you have any ideas for future tutorials or something you want to learn please drop me a comment below and i'll be sure to make the video in the future but if you want to learn a little bit more about landscape photography click this video here where i share my best advice for any photographer I go to the Drakensberg and I take a few nice images. But until next time, cheers.